Can this thing here make the Nokia A14 X25G2 perform even better? These things here are Nokia's so-called NA-IS1-14SX2. You know, incredibly hard to pronounce name. Thanks God for my teleprompter. But in a nutshell, it's a spacer. These here have been introduced quite a while ago. The new A14 G2 wasn't even delayed at that point, I believe. But uh, now where the fan is finally here, let's take it for a spin and tune it with Nokia's own spacer to see if there is any more performance to squeeze out of them. The NAIS1-14 SX2, yes, still incredibly complicated name, uh, let's just call it spacer. It also exists in a 120 millimeter version. But as we are talking solely about the A14 today, let's also concentrate only on that one. In such a box, you will find two spacers, as they come in a dual pack, as well as Noxua's uh, rubberized anti vibration mounts, a bunch of longer screw sets for cases, a set of M3 threaded red, and another set of longer red screws using the UNC standard. Basically, every possible installation method that you you may need or may not need. The reason for this thing's existence is, of course, hidden in a incredibly long and well-explained page on Nokia's website. But in a nutshell, Nokia claims that having this in between your fan and whatever is pulling air or it is pulling air through, be it a filter, red grill, mesh, whatever, it will maybe improve maybe the performance or in other words, the amount of air that passes through and maybe improve the noise by reducing it. So basically less dB. And the idea behind this is quite simple. If the fan is sucking through something, it creates an undesirable influx turbulence. Create a 5 mm gap, essentially the thickness of the spacers, and this may reduce it and create a positive effect for both performance and noise. Maybe. To mount these, you need to remove the rubber gasket or the corner of the fan, depending which one you got on the fan, and then replace it with the spacer that comes with its own little rubber pieces. And in case you wonder, yes, these holes here are proprietary Noxia. Only Noxia fans got these. You don't say anything to Noxia, but you can snap these off. And then you can use it on almost whatever fan you want. A Fantex D30 works if you're willing to like, push it slightly. I just... Just so you know. We have seen this type of spacing in action in the past. For example, and we'll never forget it, that was the, the noise blocker e-loop fans. Incredibly interesting fan. They have like these rubber knobs that should be used if you install them. And if you don't, the noise that is going to be created by the fan is just interesting. Add the rubber knob, aka spacer, noise is gone. So adding space to get rid of unwanted noise already exists as a concept for a very long time. The thing is though, Noxia already says at the very beginning that this is not a generally applicable science. They got a big ass caution saying that it is not possible to reliably predict how much of an improvement, if any at all, adding such an inlet spacer will make or not make. And even Nokia themselves have all sorts of graphs showing that not every one of their fan can create the same, if any, type of benefit, depending on the use case and the fan and the fan speed, and basically everything can change. It. Now, just as a little fun exercise for myself, I mounted these onto the uh, the A14 G2, and then I slapped the whole thing onto our case simulator. You know, the box where we benchmark fans in a case-like environment by using two of them to recycle the air within the box. And I did install these on both the intake and the exhaust fan. Now, as you might expect, doing this was incredibly freaking stupid. In no way, shape or form will any of the two spacers create any benefit for the fan if there is nothing that the fan needs to pull air through or push the air through. It doesn't matter. In the case simulator, we have close to zero restriction. No filter, no grill, no nothing. And who would have thought the fan creates exactly the same noise level throughout the run? That that really makes sense. But because I essentially spaced both fans five millimeters away from the passive heatsink in the center, I basically created an offset for the temperature. And not a good one. 
So sure, the performance aligns relatively quickly after like 60 or 50% fan speed because everything just hits noise floor. But you see my point. Just installing this without thinking why you need it is incredibly stupid and it might actually lead to worse results. But I also tried to use these in a manner that they were intended for. Basically by slapping a sort of filter, grill or whatever I could find on top of them. And the results are unmeasurable at best. Not a single one ever made it outside the margin of error zone. So for now, the easiest way to get any performance measurement out of those will be on top of a radiator. So let's leave the performance part for later and for now just enjoy this creation of NFA14X25 G2 noise samples with different types of grills with and without spacer. And did you hear any difference? Because I don't know. Sometimes I think I can distinguish between two of them, but it's first of all not a rule throughout every single one. Some are very, very minimal, some are quite less minimal, but it really, really depends. It, it really depends. And now let's talk about something that can be benchmarked. Throughout the whole page, Nokia repeatedly states that these are used as suction or for pull applications. As our usual radiator fan testing machine uses push applications, that was an issue, so we did re-benchmark the non-modified A14X25 as a pull fan and added it to the list. And just as a reminder here, we benchmark uh, our fans on a 60mm thick 140mm Alpha Cool Monster Red where we measure the water temperature above ambient and then we basically lower the fan speed and measure the noise and temperature across the run. And then we create a noise to performance curve out of that. Of course, this is now an apples to tractor comparison. Every fan on this list pushes air through the radiator except the new end. But this also shows a very interesting point, and that is that at 7.7 .7 degrees C above ambient, the NFA14X25 is a much, much better pull than push fan. Like, ridiculously better. Like, this is a world's difference. Holy damn. But let's finally see what that spacer can do for the new Nokia NFA12X25 on a radiator. And lo and behold, nothing. Yeah, no joke. To the 0.1 degrees C, identical. Incredible result. But the Noxia's defense, they did state that this can vary from application to application. It can be influenced by the overall flow resistance, which our 60 mm thick radiator probably has a lot of, and it can vary by speed, possibly even creating undesired results. And we even encountered such a undesirable result. We measured the noise of the A14X25 G2 with and without the spacer as a pulling fan on the radiator, and in this case we even measured it from a 50 centimeter distance instead of the full meter distance we usually do, just so that it can amplify the results as the radiator made it hard to measure anything at all over like a one meter distance. Anyway, something that we saw is that when both are spinning at 100% fan speed, the one with the spacer is actually worse, which funnily enough then promptly switches once both of them are spinning slower, with the spacer model taking the lead until both are reaching noise floor. 
And we map these decibel numbers out with the performance results from our radiator machine and yes, we got the same result. Although the noise to performance ratio of the pole version without the spacer was marginally better at max because of that noise, the spacer quickly took over and stayed ahead until the end. And as of now, with a 60mm thick 10 FPI radiator, so basically a big as monster red, at max, absolutely zero benefit. But make it spin slower and the spacer will win. Not by a lot, it's not like this makes a brand new fan, but minimally better ratio. And FYI, if anybody really wants to know the full numbers, it's not like the spacer got a better degree C number when spinning slower. At 90%, the spacer was 0.3 ahead, then at 80% it was 0.1 behind, and then both just equalized after like 60%. So it's, the noise changed this ratio a lot more than the temperature did. But I'm not done here. Not even once have I found the word push on any of Noctia's pages regarding the spacer and I didn't understand why because the holes are on both sides. You can install this also on a, a on a fan as a as a push config. Nobody is stopping you. I get it when it comes to noise. After all, the fan has a backside, the, the backside of the motor and and that one already adds a few millimeters worth of, of plastic essentially and that already kind of acts like a spacer. But what I never understood was doesn't adding that spacer, wouldn't that maybe amplify the, the already present like spacer-like environment at least a tiny bit and adding a tiny bit more space behind the backside of the motor which is basically the part that does nothing if you use it as a push fan. Like, there is no air being pushed on, on that whole area, it's a lost area. And if you add this, wouldn't this reduce the area because the air would just distribute? So let's just try it out. And actually, already the noise improved. Having that spacer on an A14X25 as a push fan helped significantly more than what it did with the fan in pull. From 100% on, there was a net benefit when it comes to noise. Mind you, we are now back to the regular one meter distance to have the usual numbers uh, back up and so that I can use the usual graph, but either way, until both fans hit noise floor, the A14 with spacer was flat out quieter. And now comes the kicker. When I benchmark the A14X25 G2 in the regular push location, after I added the spacer, the temperature fell to 10.1 degrees C above ambient for the water, which is 0.5 better than the original value. Not shabby if you look at which fans lie within a 0.5 degrees C radius. And the peak of this is, if we go through the whole run to create a noise to performance curve, the push version with spacer is consistently better off. From start to finish until both hit noise floor, the one with the spacer is ahead in both noise and performance and a combination of the two. And this then leads me to my conclusion. I have no fucking clue what to make out of these. Now, what we have found out today for case fans in combination with the A14 X25 G2s, no measurable performance benefit. Sometimes, sometimes a hearable whistle that disappears, but only sometimes. In pull on a radiator, no performance benefit, or at least a, a so tiny one, and only if they spin slower, and there are so many ifs to say that this improves anything. Then for some reason, even if Nokia said to use them in way A, if I use them in way B, basically as a, as a push fan, a very small measurable performance benefit and noise benefit across the range. But, and, and that's the point here, all of these results were measured using my Alpha Cool Monster 140mm base, 60mm thick, 10 FPI radiator. And as Nokia says themselves, everything, the red, the fan, the air resistance, everything will have an impact. So if you don't have the precisely exactly the same setup as I did for testing, none of the performance results or noise will apply to you. So would I recommend anybody to get a box of these if they are already shopping for A14 G2? No, definitely not from the get-go. The performance differences are so minuscule and they only apply under such specific circumstances that I would never recommend to just get one of those and see what happens. Or not get one of those if performance was your goal in the first place. 
However, if you want to get the noise down, for example, if you got them on the radiator and we've seen that except for the very high speed moment, the spacer did win in the noise department. Or, and this is also very important, if you hear a, uh, a whistling noise because you've got the, the kind of case that has a fan mounted straight onto a mesh, a grill or whatever, and you, and you hear an unwanted noise, what you can also do is uh, let the fan spin at max and then unscrew it basically, keep it in place. If you hear the whistle, go back by five millimeters, a tiny, tiny bit. If the, the noise disappears, then you know adding the spacer might lead to getting rid of that noise. But just buying them to buy them because you think this will perform better, even on radiators, I mean, sometimes, maybe, but not by a lot. Now on the price side, it's Noxia, and they go for around 17 euros right here and now, which is kind of expensive, let's be honest. But credit where credit is due, Noxia published all the 3D printing files for free on the internet. You can just download them. So if you do not know if these may or may not help in your specific use case at all, and you got a 3D printer, great, just print them, test them, if they work, cool, you can, you won't have the rubber, that's for sure, but you can add whatever, you, you can buy these rubbers like for an euro on Amazon and then just cut them and glue them, I mean, you, you can get around that. And if you don't have a 3D printer, I heard those uh, online on-demand printers are quite affordable or look for one locally or a friend or whatever. But uh, I, I just wouldn't buy a box of them just to see what happens. Whew, that was a complicated take. Who would have thought that a bunch of spacers would require so much testing just to finish a review with? It depends on everything. But okay, this should be all for the Nokia NAIS114SX2 spacers in combination with the brand new NFA14 X25G2. And at this point, a huge thank you to Nokia for sending them over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership, so if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to pay for the creation of a beautiful graph of when to use these spacers. It's going to be hella complicated, I, I guarantee. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the holo fans that we had on the table a week ago. Yes, these fans can create holograms. What the hell? Anyway, thank you for watching, and hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.